Thank you. <clears throat> I hope you see it works. It's really a pleasure being again here at ACTP, and I'm really enjoying my week here, I should say. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is a topic uh, I'm working on, uh, on and off for the last 15 years. And so I, I thought it would be a nice time to give a sort of survey or results in particular from a, a particular point of view, starting from more or less the beginning up to uh, very recent results, uh, in the sense that the, the last result I'm going to, to say at the end of the lecture, I just proved it yesterday. So, very recent. And it is a work in progress, uh, as you can imagine, with uh, uh, the Jasmine Raisi from Toulouse and uh, Tamara Servi from Paris 7. Okay, what is it all about? It is uh, the final aim of all of this work will be to describe the dynamics of germ's tangent to the identity in uh, CN. The germ tangent to the identity, it's uh, uh, map F from CN0 into itself. So it is given by a convergent power series. And tangent to the identity means that, uh, well, of course, F0 is equal to 0. And the differential at 0 is the identity. This means that you can write it down in this form, f of z is equal to z plus p nu plus 1 of z plus eigenorder terms, where p nu plus 1 is an antiple of uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree nu plus 1. And of course, uh, we assume this is not identically 0. And this nu here is the order of our germ. This is in Cn. Let's uh, describe very briefly what is known in dimension 1 where there is uh, the famous uh, Lofatou flower theorem, which is the beginning of a theorem, which gives a complete description of the dynamics in a whole neighborhood of a fixed point. And instead of stating the theorem, it's much easier and more understandable just to present a picture. The idea is the following. This is the origin. There are exactly new in this picture, new is equal to three real direction, which are the attracting direction, and the corresponding three, again, real direction, which are repelling directions. And around each of these uh, directions, in particular around the attracting directions, there is uh, a set, uh, which is a petal, of the size of this four, so that if you start inside the petal, the attracting petal, then the orbit will converge to the origin, tangent to this att real attracting direction. You have one for each attracting direction. And if you consider the inverse, the inverse is still tangent to the identity, and the attracting direction becomes repelling conversely. So you also have petals for the, for the inverse, which are these blue repelling petals. Where for a map, the, the, um, the dynamics is escaping. And considering the union of attracting and repelling petals, you get a full neighborhood, pointed neighborhood of the origin. Uh, well, when, you say yes. you when I say direction, I mean uh, really uh, which life. Which we, uh, N equal to 1. This is ni. This is the reason I wrote ni plus 1 over here, because you get 
If you start uh, with, uh, a, with a quadratic polynomial, you just get one, and uh, if you remember, z plus z squared, you get the cauliflower, which is uh, just one petal, well, one basin, which is the inverse image of a petal. And, uh, well, a typical question is what happens when you start in the intersection between an attracting and repelling petal? And the answer is that the orbit starts going away until it leaves the repelling petal and then comes back to the origin, staying inside the attracting petal, going tangent to this direction. Okay, so this is, uh, and uh, well, uh, there is, uh, all, it is also possible to prove that inside a petal, uh, you can conjugate the dynamics to a translation in a right half plane, and uh, you can get the complete uh, uh, topological classification from this, uh, and uh, also the uh, Calvaronis moduli for the analytic classification comes from the picture, this picture, essentially, when it looks what happens, changing coordinates in these intersections. But uh, um, I'm not going to talk about that. No, no, you can define petals with exactly this shape. No. Oh, well. They're almost invariant. They're sent into themselves. You have to think that the idea is that of a translation, you send the origin to infinity, you have a translation by one, and so these petals are the equivalent of the right half planes. Well, actually, to, to get a full neighborhood like this, you need something which is larger than half plane, but this idea. Of course, this is not the basin. If you want to consider the set of all points going to, whose orbit going to the origin tangent to this direction, you need to take the inverse images of this. And you get then something with fractal boundary, as you can imagine. But uh, you can define the, pe uh, the, 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 um, the formal definition of petal is a simple connected set with the origin in the boundary, which is F invariant, and such that if you have a, an orbit going to the origin tangent to this real direction, then it is eventually into this set. And with this definition, you can get exactly something with a real analytic boundary set at this point and uh, with this shape. You get a whole family. Yeah. Yeah, yes. You can. It's a local thing, so you, you, you decide the neighborhood you're working, you find a pattern inside the neighborhood. Okay, so this is a situation in one variable. And now we are interested to see what happens. Uh, in several variables. Okay, there is uh, <coughs> one case uh, where everything uh, is easy. It is <coughs> if there exists a one dimensional. Hmm. A complex curve in CN F invariant passing through zero then we get a fatu flower. Uh, this kind of setting is called a fatu flower. And, uh, well, this is clear. I mean, if you have a, a one-dimensional thing, one-dimensional like complex curve, which is F invariant, you just apply the one-dimensional statement restricted there, and you get uh, this kind of uh, configuration. At least one-dimensional. I'm not going to talk about the problem of describing what happens in a whole neighborhood of the origin in several variables which is a, a, a very important, very much open problem, but it's, uh, we are 
in a, in a, attacking a, a, a preliminary problem here. The point is uh, that uh, in most cases, uh, this not, cannot happen. This, uh, in general, no. There are, in general, there are no one-dimensional complex curves F invariant passing through the origin. And uh, the, the, Akin gave uh, an explicit example, and then recently Reborn showed that for a map of this form, um, let me write it down correctly, is uh, Z plus W square, W plus Z square plus lambda Z to the five. This map here has no F invariant curves for almost every lambda. Actually, for every lambda outside the uh, polar set. So, we cannot expect to use uh, this approach to get uh, to flower invariant sets. That is one dimensional invariant set in several, in several complex variables, in several dimensions. So we have to do something different, even though, as you'll see, this idea of having some invariant, uh, F, uh, F invariant, one dimensional thing will turn out to be important later on. It is actually what we are working on now. So what to do, the wizards, is, what I'm going to describe now is uh, part of uh, a Carl Akin's theory. This has been done by a Carl in 1985 using uh, L, uh, his approach using uh, resurgence uh, functions and uh, mold theory and so on. And I came requested part of his result and then got something new in more classical terms in 1997. The result given the idea of where to look is the following. Assume you have that there exists a Z note such that the orbit or Z0 go to, goes to zero, and the direction of, the, of this orbit, I will tell you in a second what I mean by this square bracket, tends uh, to a direction in Pn minus one of C. Here, by this square bracket, uh, is just uh, the canonical uh, projection from Cn minus the origin to Pn minus one of C. So assume you have an orbit going to the origin tangent to some direction. Yes? Complex. complex. Exactly. This is one, exactly one of the points. This is a complex direction. I finish the statement, then I comment on this. This is important. Then, if this happens, this direction here cannot be any direction. It is what is called a characteristic direction. That is, it is a sort of eigenvector for p nu plus one. If you take p nu plus one of v, this is equal to lambda v for some lambda in C. The actual value of lambda has almost no meaning because since uh, this is uh, homogeneous degree nu plus one, 
Uh, if you just multiply by a number here, you get uh, a power of it over here. What it does mean is whether lambda is equal to zero or not. Indeed, this is a, there is an important distinction. If lambda is equal to zero, we'll say that the direction is degenerate. If lambda is different from zero, we'll say that the direction is not degenerate. Coming back to your comment, this is a notion that you don't see in one variable. Because in one variable, you only have one complex direction, which is your plane. Here, what's happening is that we are trying to understand what are the direction that might contain is a strong word. But uh, I mean, if we, we add such a, a one-dimensional complex curve, it will be tangent to something. And we would like to know what is this something. The answer is the sum that is characteristic directions. But the point of it is that characteristic directions always exist. So you, you have at least one point where to start looking. One uh, uh, remark is that this does not give the whole uh, The whole possibility for, for, uh, for um, uh, orbits going to the origin. In this, uh, in the one dimensional case, all orbits are, well, are of course so tangent to the one dimensional, in the only direction you're there, but they're only tangent, also tangent to a, a real direction. But uh, in several variables, uh, a remark, there resist orbits going to the origin such that uh, the direction is not going anywhere. They are going to the origin along spirals. There are examples of this kind. There are also examples of uh, small cycles in, in several values, that is, of uh, periodic orbits accumulating at the origin. The situation is the following. In, uh, in generic cases, uh, these are, there are only a finite number of uh, characteristic directions. The exception uh, is uh, one case uh, which is called the decritic. Essentially, when uh, all that, what it means that all directions are characteristic, it means that this p nu plus 1 is a multiple of identity. In that case, uh, all directions are characteristic, and the dynamics are much easier to start. Indeed, well, actually, I will uh, not consider the rest of that case because it's much easier than the, uh, the other cases. But in generic cases, there are only a finite number of them. You can count with multiplicity. It depends, of course, on new and the dimension. Anyway. What uh, Ekala and Kim were able to prove was the following theorem, which is a sort of converse of this proposition. If V is a non-degenerate characteristic direction, then the resist uh, phi 2 power tangent to v. Now I have to tell you what it is, phi 2 power. Well, essentially, phi 2 flower is a, a one dimensional version of that picture. That is, uh, well, la, first of all, we need to have uh, the equivalent, the an analog of petals. And the petal, uh, in, the analog of petal is called a parabolic curve. Parabolic curve is uh, a phi from some d into cn, <coughs> injective, 
holomorphic such that, well, first D in C is simply connected with zero in the boundary. Actually, when I'm talking about the photo flower, usually uh, D will be exactly a, a, one of these petals, exactly that one. Two, the image of phi is F invariant. And three, F restricted the image of phi to the K converges to the origin. And moreover, we shall say that, uh, uh, ah, yes, of course, I didn't say it, uh, and phi of zero is zero. One can always assume that phi is continuous up to the boundary. That's not a problem. And we'll say that uh, this phi is tangent to a direction d if uh, its direction goes to the direction d for z going, zeta going to 0. So you have to imagine that a parabolic curve is just a holomorphic injective image of one petal in Cn with the origin going to the origin. It is F invariant. And so inside here, you have exactly the same the dynamics you have in one variable, including the fact that it is conjugated to a, a translation. A Fatou flower is a set of new parabolic curves. Tangent to the same characteristic direction. But including different real directions. So in a Fatou flower, you get the same complex direction, but with each one correspond to a different real direction, a different real attractive direction. And uh, of course, you have the same for the inverse. So you also have the repelling fatu flower. But the point is that uh, these petals, these, uh, these parabolic curves, are not inside something going through the origin invariant. They uh, can have a uh, um, pretty bad behavior at the origin. There is no way to extend them holomorphically in any way. Only up to, up to zero. After, after zero, there is no, no, no real reason for them to, to extend. And how quickly do they go zero? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They, they, you can uh, actually. The, um, it depends on, uh, on new. They go to the origin like 1 over k to the new or new plus 1, something like that. OK, so this is uh, uh, very good. So this is a color kim. It was, it, uh, it's very good because uh, it works in any dimension. But it, it, it is not uh, yet the end of the story, because this is a generic condition, but it is not always satisfied. There are maps with no, no non-degenerate characteristic direction. So one would like to know what happens for uh, along degenerate characteristic directions. Well, there is one case where nothing happened. In the sense that if you have a, a, a fixed point set, which is not just the, just the origin, there are direction tangent to this fixed point set, and this direction are characteristic are degenerate. But in that case, nothing happened. I mean, we have, we have just a fixed point set. So we'll make a standard assumption, which is not an, really necessary, but it, it simplifies some statement. We'll assume from now on the zero is an 
isolated fixed point. Okay, to, uh, to give you an idea what one might try to do in, uh, along the generative direction, let me give you a very quick uh, description, very quick, description of how to prove such a theorem. The first step uh, is blowing up the origin. Growing up the origin, you replace the origin by a, a Pn minus 1 of a, of a tangent direction there, and you can lift the map so that it becomes the identity of this uh, exceptional divisor, this Pn minus 1. And then you can assume in that uh, the, uh, our non degenerate Cartesian direction is 1, 0. Then we can write the map in this form. F1 of Z, Z prime is equal to Z plus Z1, sorry. A, Z1, nu plus 1 plus higher order terms of the form Z1, nu plus 1, Z prime, comma, Z1, nu plus 2. And the other coordinates instead are written this way. Our identity minus a z1 to the new z prime plus higher order terms z1 new z prime square z1 new plus 1 z prime plus, this is important, z1 new plus 1 psi 1 of z1. Here I am writing uh, z prime is uh, z2 up to zn. So this is the first coordinate, these are the other coordinates. And uh, as soon as v is a, degenerate, uh, is a characteristic direction, you can write it blow up in this way. And non degenerate is equivalent to having this a different from zero, this co coefficient over here. So, uh, well, if this term here was not present, what we would have is that uh, z prime equal to 0 will be invariant. And so we'll have uh, one curve, one one-dimensional curve passing through the origin, which is uh, the invariant. You can apply the one-dimensional theorem to get a, a fatal flower. But in general, this term here is over there. So uh, Akin's proof, Kalas uh, Kim's proof, uh, well, the idea is to change variables in a sector. The ch these changes of variables are not defined in a whole neighborhood, but only in a sector, so that you can uh, push this exponent here as high as you want up to a million or whatever it is needed. And then uh, the, uh, there is a, a, a way to rephrase resistance of parabolic curves in, as a, a fixed point theorem, fixed point problem in a suitable functional space. And uh, uh, it turns out that the operator, given this fixed point problem, is a contraction with respect to a suitable metric, and so you get a fixed point. And so you get a parabolic. So the point here is that uh, what uh, point we wanted to make is that uh, it's uh, one anyway is looking for in some sense uh, some um, curve which is invariant, even though it is defined only on sectors of. Uh, okay, so what happens? Uh, for the general characteristic directions. Here, that theory is uh, well developed only for n equal to 2.
Okay, the first uh, uh, main result, uh, which is uh, something I proved in 2001, is that uh, uh, if n equal to 2 and uh, O isolated, then there always exists a photo flower. tangent to some direction B. Actually, I prove something more precise than this. So, so the fatal flower, it exists even if all the characteristic direction are degenerate. I prove something more precise, and to state it, let me write down in a slightly better way the, the map in dimension two. So after grow up, we can write in this way, F1 of ZW is Z plus Z to nu plus one, A naught of ZW, F2 ZW is equal to W plus Z to the new B1 ZW. When there are a finite number of characteristic directions, you can always do this. And, uh, well, I also assume in that one characteristic direction is one zero. And uh, so one... Uh, one zero is a characteristic direction if and only if in writing this way B one of zero zero is zero and it is non-degenerate if and only if a zero of zero zero is different from zero. Okay. In, uh, in this uh, under this condition you can write down a zero of zero w will be of the form a zero zero plus a zero one w plus etc. B one of zero w will be something similar, and but with no constant term, so it will be b zero one w plus etc. And then we can introduce three important numbers. The first, uh, actually, four important numbers. M, which is the minimum k such that a zero k is different from zero. Tau, which is the minimum k such that b 0 k is different from 0. Then uh, the, what we call the pure order, nu 0, which is the minimum between uh, the order of b1 and the order of 0 plus 1. That is, uh, it is the, the the, the degree of the uh, first not vanishing term in the power of series expansion. And at the end, the last number is the index, iota, which is the residue at zero of A0, 0, 0W over B1, 0W. Okay? There are four important numbers. And the statement I have, which is slightly more general, general than that, is that here, if this index does not belong 
it is not a positive rational or zero, then there exists a fat two flower tangent to that characteristic direction. That is, uh, I've chosen a characteristic direction uh, which I can assume to be 1, 0. I, write, I blew up, I wrote it in these coordinates. I compute the index. If the index is different, it's not a, a non-negative rational, then we have a, a fatu flower tangent to that direction. Well, actually, that theorem is a consequence of this. Because uh, from going to here to there, you prove, uh, because there is uh, an index theorem, saying that uh, if you take uh, the sum of the indices over all uh, characteristic direction, you get minus 1. So you should have at least 1, which is not a non-negative rational. So this opens uh, uh, one conjecture. But the same holds if uh, yota is just different from zero. And uh, on this conjecture, there is uh, an important result by Molino. in 2009, and she proved that the answer is yes if the poor order is 1. And, uh, uh, and this is, seems to be a technical assumption, not really necessary, but I'll discuss about it in a minute. And, of course, uh, there is a, a very large open problem here. Question. Does it hold for n greater or equal to 3? Up to now, this is completely open, even though I hope in five minutes to tell you some, uh, a possible approach to that question. OK. Recently, there has been, a diff uh, there's been developed a different approach to the subject, essentially a formal approach. which is due to several people, uh, Brochero Martinez, uh, Cano, Lopez Hernandez, Lopez Hernandez, Camara, Scardua, Sanchez, I'm clearly forgetting somebody. The idea is to consider our germ as the time one map of a formal vector field, not necessarily convergent, and trying to apply results known for formal or formal vector fields, and from that to deduce something for about the, our original germ. And it turns out that with this approach, one can get results which are not exactly in, 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 in. one can get something more but something different with respect to the approach we developed. So they are sort of complementary. For instance, Lopez and Nance Sanchez have been able to prove a fully result a few months ago, actually. They proved that we are in dimension 2. They also have some results in higher dimension, but let's state it for in dimension 2. 
if f admits a form, and I'll tell you in a second what it is, invariant curve, not uh, uh, completely fixed, that is not containing a fixed point set, then either, well, no I, f or f minus 1 have a parabolic curve asymptotic to this formal invariant curve. Uh, formal invariant curve, I mean something, well, there is a general definition, but uh, let's say which is uh, the something defined by a pair of formal power series. Okay, you imagine as a, if you have a, a holomorphic curve, you, it will be parameterized by a, a pair of converging power series. So you just take a pair of formal power series in one variable. Okay, you can give a, a meaning to the fact that uh, this pair of formal power series is F, uh, of course, uh, yes, invariant. Essentially that uh, if you apply compose with pair of power series with F, you get a reparameterization of a power series. Uh, not completely fixed, it means that it is not <laughs> this parameterization is not an entity. And asymptotic, it means the asymptotic. It means that on a sector, this formal power series gives you asymptotic expansion of this parabolic curve in a sector, not a, in a whole neighborhood. And the proof is that uh, if you can, uh, if assuming this, uh, you can uh, write uh, your map uh, in a particularly good normal form, so you can uh, essentially say something about A0 and B1, and then applying uh, a, a variation of Quim's idea, one gets uh, a convergent. Uh, parabolic curve asymptotic to that defined in a sector. This uh, brought us to think about, uh, okay, when there might be, exist a formal invariant curve and uh, whether power series are enough. And uh, this is exactly what we are doing, this is what we are doing in the last few months, uh, and the answer is that uh, we have a number of cases where we, have, uh, we can prove existence of invariant curves, but, and this is the most interesting part, power series are not enough. This is uh, one of the main difference between uh, working with uh, well, uh, in discrete dynamics, uh, that is with germs of maps instead of or continuous dynamics, that is using vector fields. Um, by the way, il, uh, these two theorems uh, are not uh, overimposed in the sense that uh, if f admits a formal invariant curve, uh, the formal normal forms uh, that I described, you, I told you before, as nu zero is equal to one, but in general, the index will be zero. So this theorem gives uh, parabolic curves even when the index is zero, but uh, there are instances where you can apply this theorem and not that theorem. Because uh, all the formal power C invariant curves in this sense uh, are completely fixed. So there is, some, there is still some space. And uh, just to give you a first idea of uh, what kind of space you can get, uh, we have the following theorem. Yes. Mabate, Raisi, Servi, 15. This is in CN. 
assume the first thing we ask was uh, what happens uh, if D is non-degenerate characteristic? Almost finished. Then it turns out very, then there is a, a formal invariant curve in R or Z. This is our power series uh, with coefficient in ring R, where the ring R is C, and then uh, there are usual power series, or the ring, this is uh, the first new part, of uh, polynomials in the logarithm. And you actually need this. You do, cannot just get usual power series. And, uh, and this is the last statement. This is the thing I proved yesterday. In, uh, let's say, n is equal to 2, and uh, let's consider all the case nu z is equal to 1, that is uh, the case considered by Molino. And, uh, well, I introduce m and tau, so what happens is the following. If uh, n is equal to 1 or m is strictly less than n minus 1 or m is equal to n minus 1 and the index is different from n, then we have exactly the same statement. But and this is a more interesting case, if uh, n is at least 2, m is equal to n minus 1, and the index is equal to n, then we have a similar statement, but uh, let me write, with a different ring. As a ring, we have to take uh, the, the following. k is equal to minus infinity to some k naught, uh, a k z uh, to the uh, t to the k. OK, so this is a Laurent series, but uh, we only polynomial positive degree part. And as t, we have to take the logarithm of z one other n. So what's, what's left? What's left is the case when m is greater than or, 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 or equal to n. And this is what I was working yesterday uh, when I got invited to dinner, so you know, <laughs> duty course. And, but I'm pretty confident that this should be the, the worst can happen. And uh, after. Uh, if in this way we'll get uh, the complete description uh, for a formal point of view of what happens whether the uh, poor order is one, then there is a general uh, strategy that I proved some years ago to reduce by blowing up any germ to germ with poor order one. And so our hope is that in this way we can get uh, the formal objects which are invariant always. And then we can apply a modified technique, a modification of Kim's technique to get actually convergent parabolic curves. And there is some hope that uh, under some condition, this approach can work also in several variables, giving a, a way to attack this problem. OK, my time is definitely over. Thank you very much for your attention.